So today is going to be a little bit different than usual. Uh, I picked up another project car. I'm really good at this apparently. I, I, I'm a glutton for punishment, but uh, another project car. I'm going to try to turn this car into the uh, 24 hours of lemons race, if any of you know what that is. So it's more or less a race where you can't spend more than $500 on a car and modifying it and things like that, and then you race it. It's a cool event. I've never done it before. I've seen a couple videos that I really want to do that. So uh, been talking about it and a friend of mine was able to uh, donate a car that's been sitting in his driveway for the last 10 years. Um, I'll put up some footage of me getting it out of his driveway. Nathaniel said the clutch would just pedal would just went to the floor. Okay, and I and it probably needs a new clutch anyway because it's it's only on its second clutch. Good. And that's it right there. Yeah, you know, you, you know, I've had it for, well, I haven't touched it in 10 years, but I've had it for 20 years. Being handed over the title for the new and improved Volvo race car. Thank you very much. You can even have the pen. Uh -huh. Soon to be on a racetrack near you, but more or less, it is a 93 Volvo. Uh, hasn't ran in 10 years or so. So today, the goal is to uh, see if it starts. The fuel's probably crap in it, so I'm gonna actually pull the relay for the fuel pump and spray some starting fluid in it and see if it starts. I'm armed with a crescent wrench to put a new battery in it and uh, see how it goes. The interior is definitely a little on the rough side, but for a race car, it'll do. Alright. There's the old battery. It's a five cylinder front wheel drive. I think this is gonna be a fun little project. Alright. Can't wait to also wash it and get all these leaves and things off of it. Got a mud dauber nest in there. Gotta find the fuse slash relay for the fuel pump. Don't want that to prime up with a bunch of old fuel, but we'll figure that out. Also, I would like to start off by saying I'm in no way, shape, or form a Volvo guy, so I'm not entirely sure all the ins and outs of this. Um, so I got the new battery in. It's much smaller than the old one, uh, but this is what I was using for the MG. It should be good enough for, for today just to see if it turns over, maybe even get a spit and a sputter out of the car. So I got the starting fluid, still got to hook up the battery and find the fuse. I'll set you guys up and uh, see what I can get. Well, it actually seems like it's pretty easy to find. Looks like fuel pump is number two. So number two here. Oh shit. Number two, we're just gonna leave that guy just chilling right there. Um, yeah, fuel pump, cool. All right, I'm gonna open this up. So I have a place to spray and actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do it from here. Spray it directly in. 
All right, this is the only tool I had readily available. So yes, I'm using a crescent wrench for everything. Let's see. Oh, see, look, perfect. There you go. Right into the throttle. All right. This is negative, and that is positive. All right. Positive first. There it is. Then followed by negative. Nice. All right. So battery is hooked up. Let's see if it turns over. This is going to be the first time I've ever heard this thing do anything. Ooh, the car's in neutral. It is actually beeping, believe it or not. Um, clutches to the floor already, so something going on there. All right, keys in. Things are lighting up. That's cool. All right. Well, the gauge is moved. The car definitely cranked. I'm gonna set you guys up here and tell me what you all see when it turns right, over. I have a tripod to set you guys on. Well, how about that? It fired right up. I'll try to hit it again, see if it starts a little easier. Well, uh, the, Volvo, the Volvo seems to start, which is great. It starts off starting fluid. Uh, I'm hesitant to plug in the fuel pump fuse and pump whatever gas is in the tank into the engine kind of hesitant to do that i think i should really kind of pump it out car hasn't ran in about 10 years or we just say full send and and see if she'll run off of whatever's in the tank or we can also dilute it i can always add more fuel to it and see if we can dilute it but it definitely starts up definitely ran um the clutch is to the floor so i won't be able to drive it till i figure out what's going on with the uh master cylinder slash slave cylinder or what's going on there i'm not sure but um the little battery got it cranking and uh she runs so we're one step closer to the 24 hours of lemons um i obviously have a lot of things i need to do the car has to have a roll cage the interior needs to be gutted things like that but uh for a free car the fact that it starts that's a huge huge advantage so uh yeah, I'm really curious about the clutch because my thing is, is I don't see, I have the brake uh, booster, uh, master cylinder, and reservoir for the brakes. Obviously, the clutch should be next to it this way on a typical application. And again, I'm not a Volvo guy, so I'm sure you guys are saying it's over here, but um, unfortunately, I do not see where the clutch um, master cylinder would be. I don't know if there's like a little hatch to access under here or it's under the fuse, fuse box or something. But I would think I would, it, it, it should be normally sitting here. I, I'm gonna have to do some exploring to try to find it because I don't know where it's located at. <clears throat> there's the pedal to the floor. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know why it's to the floor. Obviously, it doesn't have hydraulic pressure, so, um, yeah, I, I just have to find out where that is, but, uh, very cool. This is where we are. You know what? I'm thinking about risking it for the biscuit and, and plugging in that fuel pump fuse and seeing what happens. I'm a risky guy. I'm a risky, risky guy. Screw it. Live life on the edge. Who knows, it might actually start. Actually, I think I have some gas here. I might be able to put some gas in the fuel tank. Let's see. Also, this is a uh, 93 Volvo um, 850 GLT. Um, the T does not stand for turbo, as I wish it did, but that's fine. It is 
a uh, gasoline car, even though this thing is green and obviously my truck over there is a diesel and usually if the gas cap is green it means diesel but it is indeed a unleaded fuel gasoline burning machine so let's uh let's see if, what it smells like let's take the cap off and give it a good huff yeah that's always a good idea All right yeah this is just spinning around oh oh, oh that looks that that looks like sand. What is that? It literally looks like there is beach sand in the fuel filler neck. I don't know if it's something that looks like straight up beach sand. I would understand if it was like aluminum oxidizing, you know, how it has that powderiness to it. But this is rusting, which makes me think it's steel, which means it wouldn't oxidize and create that powder. Huh. Now I'm definitely scared to start it. I think there might, might have been a case of sabotage of some sort. I mean, this car has been sitting at my friend's house for many moons. I don't know if a neighbor was mad yeah now 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 i'm hesitant to start it with the with whatever's in the huh with it, whatever's in the tank because if beach sand gets in the injectors i will have a bad day but i don't know how to explain it but that is like a hundred percent beach sand or like play sand that is so bizarre and like there's like a pile of it, like someone was trying to scoop it in there of some sort. Huh. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, I'm actually going to not start the car using the fuel pump and I'm actually more glad that I, uh, I pulled that fuse out and did not get whatever's in that tank into the fuel system because again, uh, I don't have a huge budget to make the car work and run, so. Um, I, I don't want to have to have any extra unnecessary, uh, unnecessary cost. So with that being said, um, yeah, it looks like we might have to be pulling the fuel tank, but there's the, uh, clutch slave cylinder. So, um, follow back that pipe. Yeah. I'll have to start tearing things apart and figure out where it goes to. Also, let's see what that fuel tank looks like. Let's get on the ground and see what the fuel tank looks like. All right. Oh, there it is right there. There's the fuel tank. Doesn't look terribly difficult, actually. Two straps, it looks like. Should be able to drop that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, pull that fuel tank out and drain it and see what's inside. But I'll give you a little tour of the car. Let's see what's in the trunk here. It's actually pretty clean back here. The trunk looks really nice. Bonus, we got some wipers, wiper arms, wiper blades, some light bulbs. Don't know the last time the oil has changed, but there's some oil. Like I said, I can't wait to hose the car off and get a lot of these leaves and things off. Cool. Go back to the inside. Power seats. What a fancy car. All right. Yeah, it's dinging at me. Shifts. There you go. Cool. The lug lock is here, so that's that's a plus. What a sweet, sweet mobile here. Maintenance records. 93 Volvo. Very nice. I think if it wasn't for the Florida sun being just as brutal as it is I think this would actually have been a really nice interior it seems like it was well kept everything seems in a good shape it's just the Florida Sun just absolutely destroys dashes and leather it dries it out and whatnot plus I think uh, the guy I got it from said that the sunroof was leaking possibly the drain down the B pillar 
or a pillar uh, was clogged up and flooding it, which again is no big deal, but I think the car would have looked a little bit more decent in the inside because the back seat's not horrible. Again, minus the, uh, the typical dry rot of leather. So, why does that not want to work? I think we got to lock it with a key. So, as for that, I think we're going to stop here. Um, oh, cool. Power door locks. I, as soon as I turned it, it made a noise. I'm going to stop here, do some research on where the clutch master cylinder is to see if we can bring some life into that, which should hopefully just be a, add some brake fluid and bleed it. And for the fuel tank, I'm just going to drop that and drain it. Um, till I get to that point, I'm going to cut it off here. Please come back again and see where we make progress on the Volvo. Uh, again, the MG is still uh, happening. Well, the race MG, the K-series MG. Um, I just got a fuel tech computer for it. Um, that's sitting at the house. Um, also, the MG in the garage, the gray one with the racing stripes, that one is also coming along. Uh, I got the front brakes did on that. I haven't recorded actually any of that, unfortunately. But freight brake, front brakes are done. Man, I can't speak this morning. It's too early for me. And uh, we should be able to give that a test run today, hopefully. Um, I gotta take this battery back to the house so we can start the MG. So, and take that one into the parts store as a core replacement for a new battery for the Volvo that's the right size because this battery here's got, what, 765 cranking amps and this one's got 540. Again, it only had to turn the MG over, so. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid, oil, and all that when I go to start it again. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in today and uh, I appreciate all the support and views comments, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thank you very much. Have a great day.